So what we discovered so far is this is another uh, circuit design uh, that is very similar to ours but using uh, three bit inputs. So what we already uh, decided that the carry output from the highest bit, which is not the signed bit, this is unsigned numbers uh, that we're dealing with. Uh, with So this is just the highest bit. The carry out from the highest bit indicates an overflow. So now the challenge is to resolve this indicator when we actually uh, viewing these numbers as signed numbers. So this would be minus one and this would be negative eight. So right here, uh, remember that um, this is just a, a, a reminder how we how we represent to complement negative number. We must flip all bits and add one. But what's interesting that of course a sign uh, to complement sign quantities require two bits. We have to have the sign bit and we have to have the data bit. And if we now revisit uh, this complete set of all combinations 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and one zero right here uh, according to the to the two's complement encoding the the values get that can be stored in these two bits the data bit and the sign bit are zero one minus one and minus two so these are the the four values that we can store in two bits now at some point uh, we started talking about the full adder truth table which includes uh, five columns, three inputs with A and B, just like over here, A and B, uh, carry in, um, and the outputs are carry out right here, and the sum, which is right here. So we're talking about the truth table implemented by each box representing a full adder. So fortunately in two's complement uh, encoding uh, situation uh, the sign bits are added just like any other bit in this multi-bit uh, addition uh, circuitry right here so we already said multiple times that no new circuitry is required transitioning from unsigned to signed numbers we just simply use the signed bit to add them as most significant bits and if there is no overflow everything seems to be working fine we try to verify some of the results right here so the same implementation stands and now we sort of want to expand this to recognize uh, begin to recognize where do we have the overflow so we're going to focus in this uh, new column we simply added new column to the to the prior table of uh, essentially we're looking at this box we have uh, sign a and sign b and carry in that came from the prior bit and we have the two outputs originally sum and carry out and now we would like to be able to calculate or generate the new signal the overflow right here so our task is to be able to let's let's populate this table with uh, indications where we could potentially have an overflow so let's consider again addition of sign numbers what we're dealing here with uh, in in our situation that basically we have the data bit and the sign bit and these are all possible combinations and these are the values that they represent so with two bits we can represent 0 1 minus 1 and minus 2 and these are the encodings of these sign to complement numbers now when they have uh, so now we could try all possibilities um, uh, to combine in adding them for instance uh, of course zero is is not necessarily not uh, we don't we don't need to include this in our um, <clears throat> in our conversation because zero doesn't change anything we say one plus zero or minus one plus zero that doesn't change anything so let's take a look at uh, 
at situations where we have opposite signs. For example, if we add uh, um, positive 1 and negative 2. Okay, so we start with positive 1 and negative 2. The result is minus 1. But this minus 1 still belongs to the same set of values. So this is not an overflow. At the same time, if we add 1 and minus 1, which is the second case where the signs are opposite, we get 0, which is, again, not an overflow. We can still fit the result in the initial set of, of bits that are at our disposal, uh, that are available. And then the overflow occurs, really, when the operands have the same sign. 1 plus 1 results in 2, positive 2. Positive 2 cannot be represented by 2 bits. Same minus 4 when we say minus 2 plus minus 2, minus 4. When we say minus 2 plus minus 1, same, same thing, minus, minus 3. So all of these 2, minus 4, and minus 3 cannot really fit into the original set of the values. So therefore, this is a clear indication that this... Um, the, that uh, this logic indicates uh, that only uh, when the operands have uh, the same signs, the same sign bits, uh, those situations could, could yield an overflow condition. So this should allow us to eliminate a few cases. So right here, uh, when the two signs are opposite, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, the signs are opposite, we already decided that these cases cannot yield an overflow. So we begin to fill our table of an overflow indicator, and we say that these simply cannot yield those situations. So the sum will never overflow. So we can predict that this is not an overflow. Next, we also observe that um, if both operands are positive and the sum is positive, it's also not an overflow. And likewise, if the sum is negative and uh, the, uh, I mean, the two operands are negative and the sum is also negative, then it's not an overflow. In other words, two positive give a positive result. This is not an overflow. Same here, two negative numbers, the signs right here are uh, are set to one so both of them are, are negative numbers and the sum yields a negative result this is not an overflow so we simply uh, fill these two zeros in our table so finally the resulting situation is that when we have two positives and it gives us a negative sum or we have two negatives and it, it gives us a positive sum these are the cases of an overflow. So th those, two, th those two positions right here should be an indicator of an overflow. And a quick observation. Just resize this to fit this formula right here. So a quick observation in addition to this uh, two positive and negative sum um, outlook or two negative and the sum is positive, uh, we can observe that um, <clears throat> if we look carefully at, the, at this portion of the table, um, uh, here 0 and 0 are, are the same values, also the same values, 1 and 1, the same. 0 and 0 the same, 1 and 1 the same, and 1 and 1 the same. So the remaining two are 1 and 0 and 0 and 1. So this uh, indicates that when the carry in does not equal carry out uh, value, this is, this is a unique place in the entire table which indicates an overflow. Only two cases like this indicate the overflow. The remaining uh, values of carry in and carry out, these uh, uh, remaining um, combinations right here, uh, all of these right here, and this one indicate no overflow.
we say that this is not an overflow so we don't have to indicate this and of course uh, <clears throat> uh, this uh, uh, can be captured quite nicely by exclusive or relationships here so exclusive or yields one only if the two inputs are uh, of different values so one zero and uh, zero one should make this indication which uh, makes it possible then to say that if uh, carry input and carry output of the sign bit have different values uh, using the exclusive or uh, gate we can uh, generate an overflow okay we take uh, this exclusive or gate place it on our design board we can reorient it like this possibly uh, place it here maybe and uh, now we can try making these connections so attach this to carry output and carry input of the sign bit right here make the, these attachments and use another LED indicator and make a connection right here of course so let's uh, make it look like this and this is our unsigned overflow I'll just to copy and paste this annotation right here and this should be a signed overflow signal okay so this is the solution of uh, this lab 4 uh, which is now taking on account um, an overflow detection uh, in addition to a fun fully functional uh, adder subtractor so this is uh, <clears throat> the solution that I would like you to uh, reproduce on your own and submit as a result of this lab and uh, just as a summary again people just way too often make mistake of overflow condition um, using an unsigned overflow indicator which is this simply the carry out to use it in both cases for sign and unsign but this is of course you can see that um, there's a little bit more effort to generate a sign overflow you have to use this exclusive or or uh, function uh, to compute uh, this condition and uh, i would encourage you to play with the different inputs um, and uh, do a few more cases to ver verify how this works uh, so um, um, you can be confident about uh, the functionality of, of these two signals and then submit the lab.